And we're early. Sorry about it, but we're early. We got a whole bunch of work to do, and we're working on this commish. So we thought we would um, just show you guys how we do uh, airbrushing. But first, Jeff has this brand new airbrush that he needs to put together. And so we're going to show you guys how to put it together and use it for shading. Um, if you're new, hi, sup. We are Artists Till Death. That's Jeffrey or Thornton, or Jeff, or B. There's a lot of AKAs. And I'm Erica, and Bowie is somewhere, as is Louise, AKA Cujo. We are artists of death. We go live every day, usually. And it's usually at 6 p.m., usually, central. But right. we're early. Yeah, we're early. It's my birthday, and he might not go live. Because it's his birthday, so far we still know. might. <laughs> All right, so uh, I got this. This is called an Iwata Eclipse HP BCS. I honestly do not know why it's called. All of those things. Um, that, and I've been using this for 27 years, 28 years, I don't know. Um, probably not that long. I don't know if the Eclipse was around then. Yeah. I, think I, I think I was using the Pache and then I went to the Eclipse after I started getting a little bit better but so what we're gonna do um, it comes with the needle in it but I figured I would just show you guys how to kind of start this So you gotta snip the tip. Snip the tip. Um, normally what, what you would think that you would do is, is put the oil on here. I don't wanna put it all the way here because I don't want, I don't want the oil going past where the paint comes out. Um, I just want it to be right here where it's nice and smooth. There's like a little, uh, what is that called? Like a bushing. It keeps it nice and snug and um, nice and tight, as you as you could say. So I'm just gonna put the oil just right around here, and that way you can I'm be not looped messing up. Messing with it, yeah, with the uh, with the paint and the air mixture, whatever. So. And then if you like, you can put just a little bit behind this trigger. Um, that's if you want, and that'll give it a nice, smooth trigger ride. Trigger and this is, ride. what this is, is, is a double action, which means you just push down and the air will just come out. And then when you pull back is when the paint comes out. Dual action. There's a, there's a single action, which is just you push down, it's like spray paint. You push down and the paint and the air will come out all at once. There's no uh, from thin to, to thick. It's all just, it's like spray paint, like I said. So it's not variable. Yeah. So, and this airbrush came with a quick disconnect. I already put it on this hose and it just fits. You now it fits just right on there perfectly. And it's basically, quick disconnect and just to make sure we have no leaks we take some Teflon tape and just put it around this guy so the the quick disconnect is only really for people that are going to be have, switching colors and have multiple guns yeah mm -hmm. if you have multiple airbrushes and don't have multiple Hoses. hoses. Okay. This one came with a hose. Which is awesome. And this way you can hand tighten it and you know that it's good because that Teflon tape really keeps it nice and snug and airtight. Wait. So then you just pull this down. Boom. You got air. Maybe. Not a lot of air, but Not it's still air. air. Just to get, uh, 
So while we're doing this, if you guys have questions on this process, this uh, medium, please don't hesitate to ask questions. We're happy to uh, answer anything you guys may have. Airbrushing with Stewardism Designs is here and all a whole bunch of other fam. So I had to send you a new tracking label. Jeff can vouch. I was yelling at our postal company because they haven't picked it up. I don't remember what I said to him and Jeff just started laughing. Like I said, I have three other airbrushes to fit for this. So the air is kind of being used in three hoses. But this doesn't sound right. Like it doesn't sound like it should. There'd be a lot more air coming out. That part sounds louder. I wonder if I should just flip it out. Let's do that. So we're just using a different hose. That's the glory of the quick disconnect. You can just switch things around really quickly. What air pressure are you going to be using? Uh, normally, I use, like I said, this is uh, this is way turned up because it's yeah, it has splitter. to travel a little farther, and there's three hoses on here, so all three. I can turn two of those off, but as you'll see here in a second, it's a you can hear. Well, that's a little bit more. I guess I'm just used to the one gravity feed one. Oh, you're using a siphon fed one. Yeah. So he usually uses a gravity feed instead of a siphon fed one. I'm not really sure why he's using a siphon. Why are you using a siphon? Because I like this is a this is an airbrush I started using the B uh, BCS. The other ones are a little bit more detailed. This one comes with a number two needle and two cone, which is a little bit bigger, so it sprays a lot more paint, but it still gives you a really good detail. Um, that's just so, that's weird. But it doesn't sound like a lot of air pressure. So let's try this. What's the ideal PSI if you're using just one airbrush and yes. not a splitter and all that? I guess it depends on, on this. This needs a lot more air pressure because when you put your paint in, when you're using your paint, put it in a bottle, there's a tube that sucks the paint up and out, sucks it up, spits it out. So it needs a lot more pressure to pull that paint out, put it nice, consistent. Now with a gravity feed, it's just falling into your airbrush. So you don't need, you need like 20, maybe 20, 25, I think. I'm not, this thing is, I don't know if it's just wonky or it's just. We got so much going on. Hoses, I have, it's such long, it's so ridiculous how many hoses I have. But with this, normally I would say 45 PSI to make it good a good continuous uh, a good continuous all right let me double check on the sound now hold on I took the uh, Quick disconnect off. You see that? That is a lot of air pressure. He also likes to play music with that is a lot. Well, you can tell the the air pressure. 
So the like, quick disconnect was the issue? It's, it, it felt like it, right? Like it was just kind of, you know. And this, this is just a, uh, a air filter. That's what's on this one, too. Um, I don't know. That was weird. Maybe I had it too tight. Uh, maybe this was too tight on there, and it was blocking the air. All right, so you definitely want a little bit more pressure with the siphon fed. So um, I'm going to go ahead and put the black. I mixed a little bit of transparent black with actual black. So I know this is transparent black, but now I know there's a little bit of opaque black in it, which is going to make it a little darker. But this stuff is really good for portraits and shadows to start. Do you want a shorter siphon fed bottle? No, it doesn't really matter. Um, we'll see. These, I'm not a fan of these um, because they do fall out easily. So I'm going to make sure that's on tight. There's a little hole here so that if that hole wasn't there, you wouldn't be able to get the paint out. All right. Normally, you could use this too. The only problem with this is, is... If you get going and you have this hooked up to your airbrush, the paint's going to fall out. If, you, if you're doing hair, you know, or big, crazy, you know, you're just filling in something, you forget this is on there, you're going to spill your paint. There's no cap for it? Not gonna, no, they don't, they don't make a cap for that. That's stupid. Yeah. But you can, you can use just a little bit of paint, clean it out with a spray gun, with a, with a bottle sprayer, with cleaner and water. And put your next coat in. With this one, you have to have different colors of these. You, you're not going to want to pour this out, clean this bottle, put paint in it. So, where did you get this? I got it on Amazon. Gonna... You got that on Amazon? Oh no, <laughs> I was thinking. <laughs> I was thinking uh, because I just got it today, so. The answer is Hobby Lobby. Hobby, Hobby, Lobby, Lobby, Lobby. Hobby Lobby. You can also get it on Amazon. Is this not? Is your hose too short? Well, that was a fun trick. Well, that might tell you right there. I might need more pressure. There we go. That's a lot of. You spray it, and you and that spider comes out like that. Too much paint. Too much paint or too much pressure. Well, both. Because you you have the control of how much paint comes out. With the air, it's there. Like you you don't have any control unless you uh, turn it down. Looks like fireworks. Yeah. This is just warm up. Like you always want to do some kind of warm up, no matter how long you've been airbrushing. You just want to get your your hand finger in there, mm -hmm. get it that coordination going. Um. So yeah, you have the mic. So, when I ask you a question, will you answer it in question form? Uh, you notice how it's not super, super dark. That's that's that transparent black with a little bit of black, uh, uh, opaque black in it. So, you can, you can start off super light. And then you just keep adding to it, add to it, add to it. So it gets dark. It's not going to go opaque black, like carbon black. But if you ever need to get, you know, that black, then you would just get a carbon black and just add a little bit to that, to your actual painting. Okay. 
It, it makes a difference. But always just do some warm ups, some dots. Keep your always keep your air on so that you know right when you want that paint to come out. If I'm talking too loud, it's because I forget I have this thing in my ear, and it's because I have this thing in my ear. <laughs> I think they hear you just fine. They say I sound like I'm down the street, so that's what I was saying. When you answer questions, also say. What and don't practice downwards like this. I would practice up. So, all right. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right into this. All right. So I think what we're doing is we're just going to put a shadow here. Normally on our lip pieces, when we do uh, all the shadows, we normally tape it off, mask it off, and cut this part out. And then take the negative part that we cut out and move it down so it gives you a nice clean shadow. But that's if we're doing all the really nice, neat true shadows and highlights in here but this is just this is kind of a unique piece he wants a pop arty but not real so i'm just going to go ahead and give it a nice light shadow and if we don't like it we can always just cut a piece of masking out drop that down and spray over it and you won't even be able to tell the difference so let's just and and with this stuff you can really really start light and it might not look like it on your screen, but we can definitely see it. This is not. People are saying that they're always nervous to paint. Now, teeth, and that's a good thing about masking is mask this off and you can cut out each tooth. And what I normally do if, I, if I'm doing you know, somebody smiling real big and there's a lot of teeth, I'll cut out each tooth, peel this tooth, peel, peel this off, leave everything else, do a little, just a very light, just a hint of color. Put that tooth back, peel this one up, do a little, just a little hint and a little hint here, put that tooth back on and then so on and so forth. And that way it gives you this really nice true edge. To where the teeth meet or maybe if it you know overlaps just a teeny bit teeth aren't perfect so um, and unless the person has you know a gap then you don't want a, a heavy black line right there you just want it to look like they're touching um, and then you could put your little bit of a shadow here because the tooth kind of it's almost like tapered like it kind of goes in it's rounded yeah, it's a little rounded, so you could put a little shadow here and a little shadow, which means just a line, just a little bit of, and practice that. Just make a bunch of these and just practice till you get comfortable doing it, you know, on your own. And some teas have, well, pretty much all teas have just a little shadow too, because there's little ridges on your teeth. And your shadow is basically, you just, you just want to, Follow, follow the lip because that's what's happening is the light is coming down and it's rounded because of the lip. Yeah. And if you're, and if you're nervous about, about doing your shadow, especially on the lips, you can always get your stencil and cover that up so you know you're not going over. These have big, thick outlines, so I'm not worried about that. But if you like, you can get there so you can get it a little darker in the corner and know that you're not spraying on that part there. And the same with this part, because this tooth is going to be a little darker in the corner, so I tend to make this corner part a little darker. You can 
already see the shadow giving it symmetry. This gold is, is uh it's gonna be covered up, so I'm I'm just giving it just a little bit because you'll have you'll darken that way more than you need over here. You don't want to do that. And if you want to hit a little bit heavier here, because it, it will be it will be darker up there. But just remember, just go with that lip. Bring it down a little bit if you want. Just always start light. And you can always get darker. And this, let's see, we're going to, and if you, if you don't, you know, have the stuff to, to mask it off. You can always use your hand stencils. Actually, we can use this one. Hold on. You guys, we have a true art studio. Every, every bit of it is used. All right, so you take a straight edge. So if you think about it, this side of the tooth is going to be a little bit darker because it's further back. it's further back and it's, you know, you want to get kind of a, almost a straight, but not because you know this tooth is going to start kind of rounding. So it doesn't really matter if it starts to round a little bit because that's going to be shadow up there. Don't start your, sh don't start your painting up here. Start it down here and just kind of give it a couple little things of paint and that right there just separated that tooth from that tooth and then just go just try to hit that line the exact same line so that it just darkens up that little bitty line let's give it a little bit of an edge there Well, see, you have a little line there. There's a there's a paint stroke that's right there, so it's that's driving me crazy. I'm gonna I'm gonna round off this too, so. Let's see, you can you can also follow this little guy here, so that'll give you a little bit of a shadow as well. Yeah, I'm just gonna just make a nice little shadow right there. Right on the bottom. You just always start light with teeth. You can never go wrong. Something die? No. Something died in my ear.
Oh my God. <laughs> What do you think of that? I think that's good. I'm sure they can hear you okay now. You guys hear me okay? Check one, two. shadows it's because of the light source yeah i'm not very good at that so i guess i've just done this for so long i just know where to put like the light the shadow because i know the light source is most likely coming from this way because that's all we've ever done i mean obviously if you want you can have the light come from this way but that would just be in a particular portrait um and i'm like i'm doing it up there i just start real light until you can kind of see where your paint is. Because that's the thing. This transparent color only gets darker and darker. So you only need just a little bit. Especially on this red. This, it turns this red really nice. Even red. I'm not going to get too crazy with this. Because we don't want to put a lot of detail. So I'm just going to go right on the bottom. And this light is terrible for airbrushing over here. Well, now I need light. Just... <laughs> Can't win for losing over here. Yeah. And you can always just hit, you can like if you're if you're not feeling this. And you want it to be a little darker, just give you a little, just go with a little line. So, so you know, you know, it's going to be an even shadow. Just kind of darken that. And darken that. And that way this gets darker. And then you have a little, a little hint of a shadow here. So it really need a nice good fade. If you're not comfortable doing this. Just a little bit. There. And we'll get a little bit here. To get a little definition, they got plump lips. It's so bright over here, like. Look at the camera. Yeah. Well, if the light's coming from this way, it's gonna be darker right here. I don't know. And are we going to do like the big white? Yeah, but while I have that airbrush, grab shadow. Oh, you actually want to do a shadow on here? Uh, yeah, I don't care. This is going to break one day, isn't it? Right now. 
<laughs> Damn, that's been on there for. This has been on here for probably seven, eight years. And I've been like moving it back and forth and it just now broke off. <laughs> RIP the airbrush holder. So I'm I'm really far back. I'm I'm gonna be putting a little bit more paint than normal because I want this shadow to be a big wide just right here. Do you want it? The thing is with the shadow like this, it doesn't make sense if there's no other body part. I don't know why. Like if it's a shadow, then it would probably you know like this would be here and then it would be like a bigger shadow. You know when you do lettering on walls and you have a shadow coming off of it? Yeah. That's what I was thinking about for this If I don't like this, we're going to paint over this. Okay. I don't know how I feel about this already. Who wants to know, do you know how many lips you have done? No. I, I cannot tell you. I'm just hitting it a little bit heavier right here on that black line. So it kind of makes it stand out a little bit more. I'm trying not to get too much down here. I don't want to make it a literal shadow. I just want to give it an illusion of a shadow, I guess you could say. JJ says the lower shadow adds more of the pop art look. Sorry, it's too hard to see that. I'll look at it in the... Mm. <clears throat> That's good. I don't want to do too much more. Looks way too dark. No. What's dark? All of that. I don't know. I don't know. All right, I'm back. So I'm gonna be stoning the that gold tooth. Jeff isn't a fan of the, the the drop shadow or all the shadow. He's not a fan of any of the shadow because it's not true to pop art, which is fair. But um, I 
I'm going to send him a picture. We'll see if he likes it, and then we'll deal with it after. I like the idea of a drop shadow. Everyone in the feed likes it, but if you don't like it and the client doesn't like it, then we'll reevaluate. Um, he did like the white that you did in the mock-up. Mm-hmm. That one, the white? Okay. Do you want me to pull a reference for you? One on here or one on there? Uh, on there, you had pulled up some. Let's get here. They've been there. You can cover them. Well, I'm going to put a little bit of spray mat over this. So he's about to spray some matte finish, clear protective spray over the piece. On the airbrush. So that On the airbrush. The, the because if he just went in with the white, it would. Yeah, so the airbrush is water-based, so it'll smear really easily. So he's sealing it in with a clear mat. Because if he didn't and he went in with the white paint pen, it would just turn gray because it would pick up. And, and it makes it cohesive with, with the whole painting. You, you, you would kind of see the paint. Yeah, like... Like that, like just straight and minimal. So, just like a dot, dot. No, Bowie, calm down. So we almost always work from reference. Hey everyone, thanks for coming in. Yeah, Vamp has COVID pneumonia. I know it. Always so over there, upset. He's not in his chair. So we're using Posca pens. They just seem to work the best, but this is well, not that's sponsored. Another, that's another reason that I put the the spray mat over it so that it seals the paint in and it almost gives it just a whole new layer to paint on to where this red wouldn't bleed through that. Science. No bleeding. 
I'm going to put you guys in your holster so that I can go lift the bean up into his co-pilot chair. I'm going to go up, Bobo. Come here. That's a good boy. Say what, B? Melissa says Amazon has the pens. Expensive, but probably worth it by the time you go through different kinds and they suck. So, Posca are a little bit more expensive, but they're definitely worth it. Particularly if you buy real Poscas and not knockoffs, be careful on Amazon. There are knockoffs. The real ones are written in. This is a knockoff, but this is decent. Yeah. So this is a knockoff Posca. It's written in not English, but the real ones are written in English. But, I mean, it's doing fine. We bought a whole lot by accident. By accident? Well, yeah, we thought we were buying Poscas, and they turned out to be uh, not Skas. Is this the same technique you used for the Hawaiian piece they, they wanted? He used a lot of different techniques on the Hawaiian piece. A lot of different techniques. I think we have everything on that except for alcohol ink. Yeah, knots goes. You can, you can use it. So next, Jeff is going to use a black Pasca, Natska, to outline our white highlights because that's pop arty. Initially, we as the artists wanted to Lichtenstein it and make it uh, not pointillistic, but you know, the dark, the dots. Do you want the rounded one? It's right, it's there. It's in that cup. It's either in that cup or I put it back in your area. It's not laying down. It's either in that cup or in your area. Then it, it's in the holder you have over there. I'm sorry, Gail. Vamp's coming back, though. She's on a whole bunch of meds and is on the mend. So he's outlining these because everything essentially in pop art has a thick outline. Rumpel says, love it. Nice touch doing the outline. Uh, it just makes it all cohesive. Great. Another sale. I got an order in transit from the Tudor sale. Oh, well, I'll find something to order. So, We've got a lot of brand new. Uh, colors from both just resin and low res in stock and there's a sale. The code is la res L E R E Z for 10% off for the next 48 hours. 
I love the black outline on the white. What do you, what do y'all think? What are we doing? I'm just gonna clean this out. Um, that, this airbrush comes with an airbrush cleaner. Um, what we wanna do, this is just, unless you have a, a cup just dedicated to cleaner, you can just, especially with this paint, it's very transparent, so it's, you know, it doesn't take a lot to clean out. So you can just fill that up. Cover it up so it kind of backs out. And then I would run a little bit of just a little bit of water through it. Just kind of clean that out. And also do that. You can mix water with that stuff if you want to kind of because that's not a lot that comes in there because you, you definitely want to make sure your brush is clean. If you're using like an opaque color, it would take a little bit longer to clean out, but this is such a translucent color, it doesn't take a lot. Oh, Gail, thank you for the tip. She gave you $20 and said you rock. Thank you. I was going to say, I don't know where our parent parent button is, but thank you so much, Gail. Really, really, really appreciate it. Sam, you had a heart attack? I'm so sorry. I hope you're feeling better. So on this piece, I put a little bit of texture in the background. I don't even know if you guys can see it. Or you can see it right there. Because it was just a little bit plain Jane. So we did that. To give the background a little bit more interest. The only other thing I'll be doing to this piece is stoning this tooth. So y'all, we got anything else to do on this piece, B? I, I like it. Gail said I got those cheap ones too. About, I'm so what mad. About outlining the teeth. I think we should outline it. I think we should make it a a, a black outline. Yeah. Won't it then look a little bit gapped? No, like there needs to be an outline. That just looks like All right. This doesn't even have teeth. Well, just leave that. I think. I think he'll like it. I think he has. Um, I think he also is into the close to pop art, but like. Pop Art 2.0 or Advanced Exploration into Pop Art by having it more detailed and not just essentially flat. That's what I think at least. So I'll send him a picture of this and then we'll see. But yeah, I'll be stoning this. I'm not going to do it on a live feed because it's boring and it takes a while anyways. Look how great this paint is. You can see a reflection all the way down to my skin tone in it. Oh. Hey, enough. Yeah, Vamp will be okay. So the pen that I used for that is of this a pen touch gold permanent quick dry marker uh be advised that you're not going to get all of one of these used before the nib dries out and it's hard to replace the nib because it's a particular size yeah make sure it's tight when you close it I could see that you're engaged in that tooth. Could you? Look. That was the sound of sparkles. That's what it sounds like in my head. Anyways. 
Huh? <gasps> yeah. Yeah. All right, you guys. Uh, just going to say the goodbyes so that Cujo, he's already looking at me. Hold on, I'll show you. Be look at this. <laughs> Gail says, I love everything about this piece. Hey, will you say the buys? Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for joining. You guys have been awesome. Um, always remember, I have to say, be kind to of one another because you never know what somebody's going through. Mm -hmm. And remember, Bowie says, <laughs> we do the test. So you don't have to. Yay. Dang. Gum it. Dead gum it. Yeah, have an awesome day. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Maybe it will be Jeff's birthday. And so we will be either early or early tomorrow. It'll be a quick video if we go live. All right, here he comes. No part. All right, you guys, have an awesome night. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. No part. You just think you need to go maybe somewhere? Like the peon stuff? Okay, okay. Let's go. Y'all have a nice day.